Welcome to the Gorgeous Gray Podcast. I am Nicole Scott, your host, registered holistic nutritionist, rest mindset coach, author of the Gorgeous Gray Movement, and the co-creator of the Menopause Reset Program. In this podcast, we have real conversations about aging as a woman and all the pressure and uncertainty we feel as we head into menopause and beyond. Let's face it, aging is not an easy conversation to have, but I say it's time to talk about the messy middle and offer hope when we feel like giving up on ourselves. Let's talk about our fears around gray hair, our muffin tops, and even our dry, itchy vaginas and everything in between. I will help you reconnect to your feminine energy and offer real solutions from experts in their field to navigate aging as a woman. I believe we, as women, deserve to shine even brighter in this next chapter of life. So with a sense of humor and a lot of compassion, let's dive into these vulnerable conversations. Hello, beautiful, gorgeous, gray women. It's Nicole Scott here with another amazing episode with Angela Brown. Hi, Angela. Hi, how are you? Good. So you're wondering who the heck is Angela Brown? (laughs) You haven't really talked much on social media yet about her, but I will. I totally will. I've been following her on Instagram. So I'm going to just highlight a few things um, about who Angela Brown. She's a coach. Uh, background is she was a physiotherapist and personal trainer and now she's a functional uh, nutritionist diagnostic practitioner and all that fancy word it really means that she's qualified to not only um, get blood um, but also then to read it and understand the story in your body of what is happening and it's really a big deal I know a lot of people are moving to kind of like functional medicine Mm -hmm. functional nutrition because everybody is different Um, She's global. She does one-on-one coaching, which is great. You can follow her on Insta at Angela Brown. But today we want to dive in and talk really about this whole conversation around like thyroid and hormones and metabolism and even hypothyroidism. And this is what she specializes in. And so that's what was kind of drawn to me is like, I got to have a conversation with um, Angela on this. She's an expert. And um, she lives in the United States, but like I said, she can coach globally. So Angela, thank you so much for being here. I'm really excited to dive into this conversation. Thank you so much for having me too. So let's start off with your story, because I know as um, you know, health professionals, we always have a personal uh-huh. story about why we land where we land. So why don't we dive in a little bit about you know, why are you in this arena of helping women and hormones? Yeah, you bet. So um, I actually got diagnosed um, with hypothyroidism myself when I was 22 years old. And when I got diagnosed at that time, I was practicing as a physical therapist. Um, I was also doing um, personal training and I was really getting frustrated because I'm like working in the medical industry, working in the health and fitness industry. And I was pretty miserable. Um, I just could not get answers. I kept feeling worse and worse every single day. I was blown off, kind of went through like seven different doctors um, just not getting very many answers. Um, uh, you know, by the time I was 24, I was told, oh, I think you're hitting menopause. That's why you don't feel good. Um, and I knew there was more to it than that. I just kept saying there's, there has to be more answers than this. So I kept doing a little bit more investigating, um, over the years. And I kind of was on a roller coaster ride. I was up and down, up and down, feeling good, then feeling worse. Um, and then I kind of hit rock bottom. Um, it was probably close to almost close to 10 years ago when I was really like, <laughs> okay, I don't think I could do this anymore. I am, I am just pretty miserable. I couldn't function. Um, I was pretty miserable at work. And so I decided to start investigating, is there some functional medicine thing that I can start, you know, investigating for myself? I was doing it more for myself. Like what else can I do? Maybe if I look at certifications, I can actually help myself. Um, so that's what I did. I went and got um, certified in functional diagnostic nutrition. And during that certification process, you have to test on yourself and you're you're your own guinea pig. And I found out I had so many underlying things going on. I was doing more than blood testing. I was, you know, checking minerals and um, doing a urine test and doing stool testing and all these things. And it was so eye-opening to me because I, as I'm doing this stuff on myself, I'm literally thinking, 
I know that there are more women going through this. I am not alone in this. How many women get diagnosed with hypothyroidism? How many women struggle through um, hormone stuff and menopause and things like this? I knew there was so many more women. So I actually decided to, um, I still have my PT license, but I decided to stop practicing as a full-time physical therapist. And I opened up my own practice um, doing functional medicine now. So I have a thyroid program and hormone program that literally is geared just to help women kind of on this hormone and thyroid journey um, and, you know, give them, give them some more hope, give them more answers than just, here's your, you know, here's your blood test results. Take this pill. We'll see you in six months. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's the journey that most women end up on and it's super right. frustrating. And so I wanted to help more women so that first of all, they don't feel alone, but like there is more to it than just take this pill. We'll see you in six months. It's so much more than that. And I, you know, mine was a 15 year battle of that. Right. <laughs> and I just got that up and I'm like, there, there's there so much more to this. There's so much more to this. Um, and so that's why, that's why I do this now. I love that, that you dug in. So what you will find when you meet a health professional, oftentimes, you know, our journey is personal, right? Mm -hmm. And we mm -hmm. have to go through, like you said, hit rock bottom and then come out the other side so that then we can share our gifts with the world. And that's what you're doing. So that's incredible. So let's dive in a little bit about some of the things that you are seeing. So, you know, a lot of my audience is women kind of in that forties, fifties, mm -hmm. they're starting to show symptoms like within that perimenopause period. And even like, I would say even in thirties, you can start to see it mm -hmm. depending on their stress level and how they're, you know, how they've right. been taking care. But let's, like, let's say that you're a woman and you've got your hormone, like you've got your period still, or maybe it's spotty or it's like all over the place. And so mine happened at 46. Let's talk to that woman where it's like, you're, you feel like your body is starting to fail you mm -hmm. and you've gone to the doctor and the doctor says, everything looks good here. And you walk away and you kind of slouch and you kind of like, I don't know what else to do. Let's talk to the audience right now about what could they do? What is kind of like the next step? They've walked out of that doctor's office. They've taken a deep breath. They want to cry. They, they're, 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 they're scared. They're confused. They're frustrated. What's their next move? What, what, what can they do? So in all reality, like the first thing when I'm talking to women, whether they're you know working with me as a client or like I'm talking to them on social media, yeah. the first thing I actually always recommend them to do is to go get a full thyroid blood panel to get a full workup of your thyroid first and foremost, because the thyroid takes such a massive hit when women's hormones are changing. Yeah. So um, think about like a triangle. So sex hormones are on one corner, yeah. thyroid's on one corner, adrenals are on another corner and they all have to play with each other. They all have to get along. So when, when a woman is kind of, whether you're, you know, going into that transition or, you know, you're, you're maybe you are getting in your late thirties or forties and hormones start to fluctuate things like that. The thyroid always ends up taking a hit. And that's one area that I noticed with so many women that I'm like, get a full thyroid panel first and foremost, because you need to rule out and make sure that the thyroid has not gotten hit with all of this. Right. Because when you do start trying to manage, you know, if there is low progesterone, if there is low estrogen, things like that, when you try to manage that, it is a much easier process. If you already have a baseline and you know what your thyroid is doing. Right. And that's one of the reasons why, like I have a, a free guide that's called the secret to reading your thyroid blood test. I created that yeah. because first of all, how many times do you go get a thyroid panel and the doctor's like, I did a full thyroid panel and it's like TSH yeah. and they didn't do anything else. So, and I have a lot of women, they're like, I don't know what I'm supposed to have check and what are the reference ranges. And so I created a guide so they can literally like print it off and go yeah. to their doctor and be like, this is what I want checked. So Beautiful. the good news is that there's ways around that too. If you can't right. get your doctor to run it, like yeah. I just have plans. I run it themselves. Like there's a lot of things you can do with that. Yeah. Okay. But I always like to get a baseline of that. Because like I said, they, it, the thyroid gets hit so hard. Yeah. And when, and think about it, your thyroid is like your master regulator. Yeah. So if it gets off, it's going to make it very, very hard for the sex hormones to, to either yeah. bounce back or to balance or whatever. And then if you're going through the yeah. transition, it's a much difficult feat when you're trying to manage that. Yeah. If your thyroid has really taken a hit and you don't notice it. And the hard part is even in the, in the, like, if you're thinking about thyroid health, Mm -hmm. Sometimes the thyroid's taking a hit and you don't even know it yet. And that's right. why I'm like, get it checked, 
get a full panel, get the whole thing tracked. So it will look like TSH, free T3, free T4, reverse T3, that is not common to have checked. And then you're both thyroid antibodies, um, TPO and TGAB. Mm -hmm. And like get those checked because sometimes you may not even notice it right. um, because so many symptoms of slow thyroid stuff mm -hmm. mimic hormone changes. Right. They mimic each other. Even, even the adrenals, they yeah. mimic each other. And yeah. so if you get that baseline, then you at least know, okay, am I dealing with some thyroid stuff here too, or am I not? And if you yeah. aren't, okay, now I know what to do next. Now I can go after, let's go after these sex hormones and see what's going on right. here. Yeah. If we are dealing with them thyroid stuff, then you know, okay, I need to start, what can I do here to manage this? Yeah. So now you're not really like guessing. Um, you at least have mm -hmm. some baseline of like where to go next. Because yeah. like think about, for example, you know, as a woman ages, typically, you know, when you start to lose, you know, production of progesterone, production of, of estrogen. Well, like, for example, if you think about progesterone, so the, your brain releases a little hormone called TSH. That TSH is thyroid stimulating hormone. That's the most common thing they check on a blood test. Yeah. That is not actually a thyroid hormone. It's a brain hormone. Mm -hmm. um, that is what make so that will tell your thyroid to release and make more T3 and T4 basically. Yeah. And that is made out of thyroid globulin, iodine, things like that. That's what helps mm -hmm. make it. Well, the catalyst for that to happen is something called TPO. Mm -hmm. TPO um, basically gets the, the, the stimulation of it is enhanced from progesterone. So if your progesterone is completely bottomed out, that's how you can have so much connection to your thyroid then. Right. Cause if it's bottomed out, you're not going to have enough production of thyroid hormones. Right. So that's one of the reasons why I'm like, you have to make sure that, that you're getting that thyroid panel checked, mm -hmm. especially, like I said, so many symptoms from your yeah. thyroid and, you know, hormone imbalance and hormone deficiency they mimic each other. Right. And so I always kind of start with that. Let's get a baseline of that. Mm -hmm. Let's see what's going on there okay. because now we can at least go, okay, now we know what direction we can go. And if they're both being affected, you need to manage them both instead of just, okay, well, we're just going to put the thyroid on the back burner. Who cares what that's doing? You kind of need to know what that's doing because it can really affect. Sometimes a low progesterone is just because of the thyroid. Yeah. Doesn't mean that you, you maybe you do need progesterone, but maybe you don't. Maybe right. you just need the thyroid to be investigated further or right. do some things like you, if you have thyroid antibodies, for example, yeah. let's do some lifestyle things to right. get those, uh, to reduce a little bit so that the thyroid does produce more thyroid hormone. Um, and then, you know, the progesterone is fine then. So that's right. why it's all connected and it's hard. Like women, mm. it's really hard because everything is connected. And when, yeah. and the thyroid typically, like I said, it is connected to pretty much everything. Um, yeah. and those sex hormones can take such a, such a hit from just the thyroid and vice versa. And so right. to me, they go hand in hand. You need to look at both of them. Right. Okay. So this is really great information. And I think like from my experience being here in Canada, I'm going to say most medical mm -hmm. doctors will only do TSH. Right. You will battle, um, because they're not educated and they don't understand. And I don't want to throw them under the bus. That's true. They have a very important role to play and they've been trained the way they have been trained. And a lot of them haven't, I'm going to say, been upgraded, upgraded in the new science, in the new ways. Right. And so whenever I coach a woman mm -hmm. to go to the doctor and they come back, you know, discouraged because the, uh, they get a lot of resistance. They're like, they no, not a lot too. of resistance. Mm -hmm. Same with the U.S. Yeah. Um, then I just say, you know, you're going to have to pay out of pocket. Yeah. Do it yourself pay out of pocket. And it's so worth it. Worth it, it right? That's what I always tell, tell people, I'm like, just, just trust me, just do it because you have to, first of all, you have to rule things out. Second of all, you actually do need to see the numbers. Yeah. So I'm like, just, just do it. Just yeah. pay it out of pocket. And that's what I have a lot of people do it here. Yeah. Same thing. Okay. Good. Um, so yeah, we're, we're U S Canada. We're, we're kind of yeah. heading into the same. So first yeah. big point on this interview here is you want to understand your full blow, uh, uh, blood panel on your mm -hmm. thyroid, the full story, including your two antibodies, yeah. right? Yeah. So let's That's talk about goodness. those antibodies because mm -hmm. I'll share what happened to my mom. For mm -hmm. four years, I'm like, mom, go get your, your thyroid checked. Mom, go get your full thyroid. Resistance, resistance. She didn't put push back. Body started to kind of do some wonky things, wasn't feeling great in her body. Finally went down to Mexico for vacation. 
stayed there a while, was able to um, go to a holistic center where right away, that's exactly what they did. And guess what her one antibody was? Like 435. Oh, my, that's pretty elevated. Yeah. And so. Yeah. And here know, she's probably had this for a while. She's um, probably had it for a yeah. while. So hypothyroidism. And she had massive inflammation in yeah. her body. But they were touting it to like, you're old. You're old. I know. You are got um, it's arthritis. It's probably genetic. You know, yeah. all of this B ass yeah. story that makes me so mad to say all of this all of her pain could have been prevented if the doctor tested yeah, and she test. put on the right diet so let's dive into that conversation so when a woman does her full panel and those antibodies are higher than what would you say higher than what 35 20 well, 15 here. because it's all over the place I've it's been all like, over the place and honestly in all the studying that I've done with it typically if it's above one it's elevated now above depending on which antibody like tpo when i if i see it above nine i'm like that's definitely that's positive um tgab typically above one i'm like that it's positive so to me it's still positive now when it's you know like tpo for example if it's below not if it's a two let's say a three or something yeah. eh, you're on the cusp but it's still above one so you need to pay attention um to me that if there's an antibody there's an antibody and there's a reason why it's there right. um I've personally, I've always hovered, never had thyroid globulin, but I always had TPO. I always hover like an eight to a nine. And then sometimes it'll go down to zero. Okay. And then sometimes it's eight or, you know, eight or nine. I never go above it. Um, but I keep that in check because I'm like, okay. I don't want that to go above that. I don't want it any higher than right. that. Um, and like, right. for example, what the story you just told, Yeah. I recently had a client who has had, she was diagnosed with hypothyroidism 25 years ago. Okay. Um, I asked for her like most recent blood panel mm -hmm. that our doctor did. Luckily he did a, a, a pretty thorough workup, but did not do the antibodies. Um, and her numbers look sort of okay, but she's pretty miserable. So I'm like, let's get the antibodies. You've never, you've never had the antibodies checked. She's like, no, 25 years, never had them. Her antibodies were in the 2000s. Oh, the oh. highest I've ever seen. And she's probably had them for a very, very long time. And this doctor would not check them, would not check them because that doctor wasn't really, he didn't know what to do with it. So he didn't want to look yeah. like, I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm just not going to check them. But, you know, did her other markers mm -hmm. and just kept upping her thyroid medication, upping her yeah. thyroid medication, yeah. um, which is a whole nother subject, but yeah. kept increasing her thyroid medication. And she's like, why am I feeling worse? Right. Not, I'm not getting better. Well, first of all, he had her on something called levothyroxine, which has gluten in it, mm -hmm. and her antibodies were in the 2000s. So someone with antibodies that high should not have anything with gluten. So right. every time he upped her meds, he probably was just, let's add more fuel to the fire. We're going right. to make your antibodies go up higher now. Yeah. Um, and that's why I'm like, you have to get a full panel. And honestly, right. every time you get it, it should always be a full panel, especially if you've ever had thyroid antibodies. They need to be rechecked because you need to see what they're doing. And a lot of doctors won't recheck them. They're like, once you have Hashimoto's, you have it. Like, no big deal. It's no big deal. You don't need to recheck them. And I'm like, yeah, you actually do because you want to see what they're doing. You want to see. Yeah. And what I'm is what I'm doing making this better, or is this making this worse? Is yeah. this getting any better? Because you really want to try to get those antibodies lower. Now, most of the time, people cannot get them to zero once you've had them. Right. But you can still put it in remission where you don't have symptoms. Right. Um, so let's talk about how, yeah. what, what are some of the things that women can do when they do get their um, antibodies yeah, back nice. and they're higher than the numbers that you recommend, which I mean, I see them high, much even higher than that. Yeah. So what kind of a lifestyle um, protocol and, and, and I'm going to say diet, um, would yeah. you put them on? Yeah. Diet is the first thing that I always go after. And yeah. that will be, I will be cutting out inflammatory foods. Yes. It's not easy for some, mm -hmm. but I'm like, trust me, you have to quell as much inflammation as you can. Yeah. The body is definitely inflamed. Um, when you have thyroid antibodies present. So I will always put them on gluten-free. I'm like, cause because of molecular mimicry, mm -hmm. your thyroid tissue mimics gluten. So every time you have gluten, it will attack your thyroid harder because mm -hmm. it thinks that, oh, now we have a foreign invader even harder because you had gluten. Yeah. So it might cut gluten out. Um, dairy can also be pretty inflammatory and a trigger for people with thyroid antibodies. So I'm usually like, cut that out, at least give it 30 days yeah. to let the body settle. Um, cutting out things like sugar, 
you know, bunch of processed foods, even soy, that can all be very inflammatory for the thyroid and the body overall. So typically I'm getting those out. Um, it's not easy for some. That's why like when I work with my one-on-one -on -one clients, I kind of help coach them through it. Like we're going to basically help you shop. You're going to shop the perimeter of the grocery store. That's going to be your almost all your foods going to be the perimeter of the grocery store. And then if we need to add other things in, because you have to have some satisfaction, we'll figure out what we can do with that. Right. So I'm always going to start with that. Stress management is one of the biggest things that I also will work on. Yeah. Stress is the biggest, one of the biggest triggers among food for increasing thyroid antibodies. And I can't tell you how many women I've worked with where we've been doing really, really well. They're doing amazing working with me. Um, antibodies are coming down. They're feeling fantastic. And then they have some stressor that happens in their life could be out of their control. And all of a sudden they are having the worst flare up of their life. Yeah. And I'm like, it's, it, it will calm down. We got to work on stress management, yeah. but stress is one of the biggest things that I see will also trigger that. And it's yeah. not easy to do. You know, there's only so much that you can control obviously externally, but I'm like, if you have, for example, if you have like a gut bug, if you have a parasite, if yeah. you have, um, you know, bacteria overgrowth or whatever things going on internally, that also is an internal stressor on the body. Yeah. So stress management, I do a lot of investigating. I do a lot of testing around that mm -hmm. to look at, is there anything internally that we're missing here? Right. That is a stress response on your body. And then if there's, you know, food triggers. Mm -hmm. So if there's a food that you're pretty positive, you're sensitive to, mm -hmm. you don't want to have that. <laughs> a food sensitivity okay. is always going to be a trigger. It will yeah. always cause a trigger as well to, to create mm -hmm. more inflammation. So I'm always going for let's manage stress. Let's manage some di diet stuff. I will also, um, have them even work on some liver health stuff because right. liver is a really big one too. Remember your liver is yes. your filter. So right. we need to get things out. We need to get toxins out. Toxins mm -hmm. can be a big trigger to raise um, antibodies too. So I do a lot of education around products they're using and let's get you on toxin free products and yeah. let's give the liver some love, like using a castor oil pack. That's one of my favorite ways. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of things like that. Anything that we can do to reduce the biggest amount of inflammation and that autoimmune response, that's what we're going to work on. Right. And how long do you see it um, reducing? Like you will retest in what, three months, six months? What's kind of your protocol? Depends. So if I have someone and I've done like the stool test with them and, and yeah. uh, maybe like we do something called a Dutch, which is a dried urine test, like mm -hmm. looking at their adrenals yeah. um, more in depth. If we've done like the mineral test, which is via hair. If I do all that testing, which are some of the common tests that I do, yeah. if we've done those and you know, it's not terrible maybe at the three month mark i'm like let's go ahead and recheck it and, and they've really been you know diligent and yeah. compliant with working on things if we see things are a little bit more of a train wreck um we have more things to work on for example i have a couple people right now who have pretty bad stool test results they have parasites and bacteria and things like that that's like a six monther um where we're not going to do any retesting for six months we need more time mm -hmm. um i need to see more compliance and things like that just yeah. kind of depends on the person. Usually the earliest would be a three month time yeah. where I would do a recheck, but average, I'd say it's probably closer to a six month where we're doing a retest um, yeah. on things, particularly the thyroid blood test. Talk about um, one of the things that happened in my journey as a, as a health professional was I had low iron. Mm. And I, um, well, I actually did. I passed out on the plane. I had just oh been gosh. running a marathon. And so I was in pretty great shape, yeah. got on a plane, passed out and of course they're freaking out and a nurse comes by and da 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 and she's like did you eat i'm like i'm a nutritionist of course i <laughs> ate you know and i'm like this is what i had i had everything balanced right um, and then i went to uh climb a mountain just to go for a casual hike and mm -hmm. i thought i was going to have a heart attack and i said something's really going right. on in my body yeah. went to the doctor doctor's like everything checks out fine i don't know what's going on so of course i go to my naturopath she's got um, live blood analysis. Oh yeah. So we look under and there you can see the little critters eating the iron in yep. my red blood cell. Yep. yep. And, all the time. Um, all the time. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And so I want to just bring this story up because, um, I often will hear, I don't know what's going on. I can't get my iron levels yep. up. up. Right. And it's the critter. And you know what? My girls have had it. Um, we have animals um, in our yeah. house. They sleep with them. They lick them. Um, I mean, people will say, well, where did the parasites come from? Anywhere. <laughs> Pretty much anywhere, but right? definitely animals. I've had one. I've, I've had a couple times actually. Um, right. And my iron was completely tapped out. And that's, that's one of the, so like 
on the hair test that I do, the, the, which is a mineral test, um, there, there is an iron marker on there. It's not conclusive enough. I always do compare it to blood testing okay. to look at ferritin and iron and like a full iron panel and compare it to yeah. that. But there's a, a ratio on there that literally will be really, really high or really, really low um, that I look at. And it's always a trigger and a red flag around my, ooh, we got to do a stool test because typically you will see iron completely tapped out because it, it just, they, it just eats it up. Yeah. Um, and I've seen people all the time where they're like, I can't get my iron up to save my life. I don't know what I'm yeah. doing wrong. And I'm like, I think you need a stool test um, yeah. because those little bugs, even bacteria, but definitely parasites, they will just eat up that iron and it will just completely drain you. It will completely right. drain you. It's, it's, yeah. and what else you need? Iron, iron is what you need for your, um, a thyroid function too. You need it for right. helps with thyroid hormone conversion, production, all, you name yeah. it, all of it. So you have yeah. to have, um, I wish it would be yeah. like a standard test at the doctor's yeah. office that yeah. and B and, um, and vitamin D right? D. Like a, for the yeah, kids. I look, at D, I look at D, I look at, um, B12 kind of as a standard. I do a full iron panel, obviously the thyroid panel, um, as well. That's to me, that's a standard, um, even looking at like homocysteine and CRP, looking at inflammation markers. Those are kind of my standards too. I, to me, those should just be standards for everyone. I wish they were, um, yeah. it would be really nice if they were, um, you shouldn't have to ask for them, but a lot of times you do. And then, then you can't even get them um, yeah. when you do ask for them. But yeah, it's so that's, I'm glad you brought that up too. Cause I see that a lot. Um, where women like I am thoroughly exhausted and we're, we're working on things. And I'm like, you know what, your iron's probably pretty depleted. Uh -huh. Let's, let's do a stool test. And sure yeah. enough, there it is. I'm like, that explains a lot. Yeah. So you're trying to take this iron and it is not, you're not, if the parasite's still there, it's going to eat up everything that you're taking. Everything. In there anyways. Yeah. yeah. This yeah. is such um, a great conversation that we're having. And for the women that are going to be listening to this, you definitely want to be sharing this with every woman mm -hmm. you love and care for. Really, this message that we're sharing is that there, um, we all deserve to feel great in our bodies, yeah. and we can, and we yeah. can, but we have to get to root cause and no magic pill. We talked about this before uh -huh. we started the podcast, right? I wish there was a magic pill to say, I just want to feel great. I'm going through perimenopause, or I'm, you know, gaining all this weight, or you know, got brain fog or hot flashes. You know, there really isn't a magic pill that you can just take because. We are all unique. We are all different and we are 90% critter. And if those critters yeah. are out of control, um, it's going to look very different in my body than it is for Angela's body. So, you know, this message that we're sharing with you ladies today is all about be your own doctor, mm -hmm. find your health team, find the health team that will invest in you, that will not give up on you, that will find the root cause that will do tests like Angela can do because she's a functional practitioner uh, because we, you know, want you to feel awesome in your body. And just like Angela, I mean, I feel like I'm such a fighter for my health. Like it's, it's like um, I say almost like a part time job. Yeah. And especially yeah. as we head into menopause and this is what I speak to, to women is that this is a time now for us to make self-care even a bigger priority mm -hmm. because for so Absolutely. many women, we come into menopause on empty. Yeah. Yeah. So Completely. let's talk yeah. about that. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the tank. And you see yeah. this all the time. Mm -hmm. The Dutch hormone comes back. Mm -hmm. Adrenals are shot. Cortisol mm -hmm. is all out of whack. Let's talk a little bit about that woman, that woman that comes in, what do we call her? The rushed woman, rushed, the woman yeah. that has done it all. Yeah. And now is landed, um, crawling to the finish line going, can somebody take care of me now? Um, what, do, how do we work with a rushed woman that is maybe ready to start putting the oxygen mask on? Mm -hmm. So definitely in that instance, and that's one of the reasons why I like doing the Dutch test too. Um, when I see women like that, I have to do, first of all, I have to do a lot of education around, okay. This didn't, first of all, this didn't happen overnight. The body did not get to that state overnight. So it's not going to correct itself in one day. I wish it was that easy. Kind of like the magic potion, like the magic pill. I wish it was that easy. Yeah. One thing and then it's fixed. Um, so I do a lot of education around this is going to take a little bit of time because yeah. it did not happen overnight. But secondly, I also do a lot of education around um, it is time to, you have to do some self-care. Yeah. Like, um, I mean, to me, everyone should do self-care, but especially when a, uh, Women, especially, you know, you're, you are approaching menopause or you are in menopause, but when you look on a Dutch test and you see that your adrenals are completely tapped out, 
that, you know, the cortisol patterns, a train wreck and all that. I cannot emphasize self-care enough. I'm always like, okay. And I, I literally, I will message. And when I see results like that, that are completely mm -hmm. a train wreck. And yeah. the woman is like that rush, rush, doing, 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 yeah. and, and just has nothing left to give yeah. um, because she's just completely tapped out. Uh, I'm do, I'm, do, I'm literally doing those messages like daily. Like, what are you doing for yourself today? Yeah. What are you doing for yourself today? And I don't care if it's five minutes mm -hmm. where you're going to literally mm -hmm. stop and like take five minutes to listen to music that you like, whatever it is. But I'm like, you, I cannot emphasize self-care enough. It's so, so important in that instance because yeah. the adrenals cannot just bounce back on their own. And the more that you don't take a step back, try to slow down, the more that those adrenals are never, they're, they're, they yeah. cannot correct themselves if you don't take a step to slow down. And so sometimes I literally have to have clients set timers on their phones mm. and like set a timer on your phone. Every hour you're going to stop. Yeah. You're going to literally stop whatever you're doing and, yeah. and take some deep breaths and slow down. And like, it, I cannot emphasize that enough where you literally have to like slow down. And I, I'm guilty of that. Uh, back in the day when I was first doing all the testing on myself, my first Dutch test, I was like, man, that explains a lot. Um, it was a train wreck. Mm -hmm. And I was one of those where I was like, I got this to do and that to do, and I'm going, going, going. And I yeah. was happy now. And I had to literally stop myself all the time and be like, okay, take a deep breath. Yeah. We're going to do something here to like, give myself, give my adrenals some love, even if it was just like taking some deep breaths for two minutes. Yeah. But I had to like literally stop myself every single hour. And that's what I have my clients do. I'm like, Mm -hmm. stop yourself in your tracks, whatever you're doing. I don't care what it is. And if it, all you have time for is to take a couple of deep breaths, that's fine. I'll, mm -hmm. I'm like, do that. Um, yeah. But then when you have the time to do a little bit more self-care, whether that is, you know, that you get outside and you go for a walk with your dog, or you're going to mm -hmm. sit down and just like, listen to your favorite music for five minutes or get on Netflix or something that yeah. you like to do or read a book or whatever it is, but something mm -hmm. that you enjoy, obviously. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, at least once a day, you have to yeah. give yourself some type of self-care for like yeah. 10, 15 minutes, at least once a day. Yeah. I'm like, then the other times you got to slow it down. I'm like, anything you can do, because those adrenals cannot recover. Yeah. They cannot bounce back if you don't take that time to literally stop yourself and slow down a little bit. And I know that's not easy, not in this day and age, especially. And all it's the things not. you have to do and you're looking at like your to-do list, like especially holidays are coming yeah. up. So I'm like, do what you have to do to stop yourself. And if it means set a timer on your phone, set a timer on your phone. Yeah. So every hour you're stopping, you're taking some deep breaths. Because I, 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 get, I, I even now, like I still have a timer on my phone because I have to do the same thing. I'll get caught up and yeah. like I have so much to do and yeah. um, I'll get caught up in that. And, um, my clients love that. They're like, that is such a good thing to do. Cause I literally will stop and be like, Hey, I got, give me two minutes, just two minutes. I need two minutes to take a deep breath here and then go back to whatever you're doing. Um, but it's so huge. Like the adrenals yeah. cannot, cannot bounce back if you don't at least start giving them some love. And here's what ends up happening. What I see a lot of women end up doing. Yeah. So they go from their, like they're, they're going, 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 doing, 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 and then they're kind of like wired, but tired, get to the end of the day, they're thoroughly exhausted, but they're pretty wired at the same time. Yeah. Um, then they go to, well, now I don't have anything. Yeah. Now I'm not even wired. I'm just tired. I don't have anything. Now I can't even do, 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 and do all the things that I wanted to do uh -huh. because now I'm to the stage where everything's just tapped out. Now right. I'm really exhausted. Yeah. So I'm like, if you took that time mm -hmm. to take some deep breaths, yeah. do some stress management, whatever that could be you may, may not get to that completely like flatlined, tapped out, don't have anything at all now, if that makes sense. <laughs> it, it totally does. And I think, you know, Angela, that would, that we have very similar stories. Mm -hmm. So I am a perfect example of the rushed woman. Mm -hmm. That was probably me since I can remember. So when I hit my first adrenal burnout, it was at age 45 when I went through my divorce. Mm -hmm and couldn't figure out why I couldn't get off the couch. So you would probably know what my adrenal scores were, right? Yeah. Yeah. Drop yeah. the kids off, come home, lay on the couch. Thank gosh, I had an online business. So, you know, I could get away with it and push clients out, but yeah, done. And it took me a good six months. Yeah. Like it was not an easy process. And now for myself, I at the close, I'm gonna be 52 next year or next month, sorry, 52. And as the rush woman, if you're listening to this, it's hard. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's built in my DNA to have a hundred doors open 
And so I, I tell myself, well, I have a bath and I put Epsom salts in yeah. and oils, but guess what? I bring my phone in there to catch up. And right. I laughed and giggled because yeah. last, last week when I was down in Mexico and I went to see a healer, she intuitively was, I see all these doors open, mm -hmm. but then I see you over here needing a bath, but without your phone. Right. She said, can right. you do that? And I was like, <gasps> I can't remember no. the last time I've had a bath without my food because that's where I like catch up on 45 yeah. minutes of getting back to people. And she's yeah. like, this is what we're talking about. This is right. like this shift in menopause and this midlife transition is can we get rid of the workload so that we right. don't think we have to have it on our plate 24 seven. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm even dealing with it as a health professional. So I'm going to tell my ladies that are following me and listening to this podcast mm -hmm. is that I'm taking on this challenge for myself to say, mm -hmm. Nicole, you can put your, you know, your phone down right. and, and set a stronger boundary, but it's not easy. And I'm sure Angela, you can, no, it's not easy. Out, right. I want, I, I, I don't want to miss an opportunity, right. That last text, that last message, that right. last cheerleading, but I have to, because if I don't three or four years down the road, down the road. My, my whole adrenal, um, you know, system, system yeah. uh, endocrine yeah. system is going to be yeah. giving me the double middle finger to say yeah. I'm done. And yeah. so that's what we mean is it doesn't happen overnight, ladies. It doesn't happen overnight. No. And I, just like you, I'm, a, I'm, a, yeah, I put a lot on my plate sometimes. Yeah. Um, and I went through a divorce myself and that was when mm -hmm. I had a pretty bad adrenal burnout. Thyroid was tanked. Adrenals were tanked. Yeah. Um, and the last thing, and I had a little boy at home, a baby basically. And I was like, how am I going to do all this? I have a kid to take care of and I have this and that. And I'm like, I don't really know how I can manage all this. And I was not giving myself any self-care. And so my adrenals were just like out, they were completely tapped out. And it took a, it took a lot to bounce back from that. But in the end, if I look back at it, I'm like, it was worth every, every time that I had to stop myself and be like, okay, I am going to take a bath without my phone. Um, I'm guilty of that, um, of, of tagging my phone in there as well. But when I started doing more self-care and like intentional self-care, yes. not go take a bath and bring my phone in there. With right. Me, that, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, that was, was such a game changer for my adrenals. And even now, like I have a lot on my plate still now and I'll have like a to-do list. And then I have to sit there and tell myself, it's still going to be there tomorrow. It's no big deal. It's not, is this, a, it, and I always, if I start to get overwhelmed and I'm like, I got to do though, I got to get this done and that done. And I literally look at the list. I'm like, is this an emergency? No, it's not an emergency. All right. Yeah. I'm fine. It doesn't get done today. It doesn't get done today. I just, I need to give myself some self-care. Um, and that was a lot of work mm -hmm. to do that and not feel like I had to get, cause I'm a perfectionist and I need to have this done and that done. And, um, but now that I've literally looked at my list of whatever it is that I need to do, or, you know, you name it. I'm like, no, that's not an emergency. Like I need to give my body some care here, or I'm not going to be able to do that list three or four years from now. Yeah. I want to be able to do the list because I'm going to be laying on the couch, not moving and functioning. Right. So I have to look at, I always think about it, look at it this way. Look at the end game. What is my end game? I want to feel good. I want to feel good when I get to my fifties and sixties. I want my body to bounce back from things. I want to be able to manage menopause. I want to be able to do that. I'm not gonna be able to do that if I don't give myself some love when it needs it and like intentional self-care if that makes sense i love it yeah so as we're wrapping up this uh beautiful interview and i know it's gonna really i think wake up a lot of women mm -hmm. to go wow like maybe i'm not really putting the oxygen mm -hmm. mask on first because yeah. if you don't there's going to be consequences that's mm -hmm. our message today is like do it now start to think about and i love th those like little tips that you just gave but mm -hmm. just summarize kind of what you've just shared a little bit and any last other tips that you could give a woman that's maybe not feeling great in her changing body. Yeah. So first and foremost, the, the big thing that I would definitely do, make sure you're getting that full thyroid panel. I would always start there. Um, and um, if you need help with that, they can always reach out to me on what that looks like. Yeah. And I still have that free guide. They have access to my free guide um, as well. Um, I would always start there. Secondly, um, take like t almost take like an inventory mm. of what is stress like in my life right now? And sometimes, sometimes you'd think I'm not stressed out. Cause I love people to tell me that I'm not stressed out. And then I'm like, no, to actually take inventory. Mm. And when you start thinking about it, like, Oh, actually I do have a little bit of stress in my life. So that is when it's time. Okay. 
write down what am I going to do for so as my stress management and everybody's stress management is very different yeah. just because someone likes meditation doesn't mean the next person's going to like meditation or whatever that is mm-hmm. so take inventory of that and then you literally need to write down this is going to be my stress management this is the and you'll have a list mm-hmm. I'm going to pick this today and every single day you've got to do some type of self-care yeah. and take inventory on that as well that you are actually doing it and it is intentional that is going to be super super important um the other thing too that I want to add Mm-hmm. is just remember that like wh- when your body gets to a certain state where it is depleted or you know your hormones are off or thyroid's off whatever it didn't happen overnight yeah. and so it takes time so that the patients it's not easy I've been there I was really impatient with it I'm not a very patient person um, so that was really hard but be patient think mm-hmm. about always think about end game always think about end game what am I, what are my intentions here? What do I want to get out of this? What do I want my health to look like? Where do I want to be when I'm 50 and 60 and start thinking about it like that instead of, oh my gosh, I can't eat gluten today. Great. The world is ending. Cause I know people do that. And I'm like, no, no, no. Look at the end game. We're going to lower your thyroid anyways. We're going to get your thyroid working better. We're going to get your hormones working better. And guess what? 10 years from now, you're going to have that managed and you're going to feel amazing when you're 50 versus 40 now. So I'm like, look at the end game, look at what you want to accomplish and how you want your health to look like, what you want it to look like 10, 15 years from now. That's what you need to start looking at. And it makes it so much easier because then you're like, oh, I am doing this for that. This is easy. It's an easier feat. Just need to be patient now. I love that. That's such great um, advice for women. And let me tell you, when I came in like a hot mess at the age of 46, (laughs) if I... I guess, had a little bit more coaching or vision, mm-hmm. um, mentorship, but at that, it's, it's interesting. It's like, what, what stops us in our track, right? Mm-hmm. right? I can't get out of bed. I would say two things, energy, right? Mm-hmm. Something happened to my energy. And for mm-hmm. most women, oh my gosh, my pants don't fit anymore. Okay. <laughs> right. Right. And so, that's a big one, right? And so those are all signs that you got to dig deep dig and deep. get to the root. And yeah. I guarantee that I had symptoms, mm-hmm. but I did not pay attention because I attention. was too busy, right? So, so common. That's why I always say, sit down and literally take inventory. First yeah. of all, do I have symptoms? Second of all, do I have stress in my life? Right. But it's really crazy because if you, and I, have a, my health questionnaire, like when clients start working one-on-one is very long. And they're like, why are so many questions? And I'm like, trust me, you'll know. And when we do our first call together, I'm asking all these questions and they're like, that's crazy. Didn't even think about that. I am actually really tired in the evenings or my hair is falling out. I didn't even pay attention that this is all happening because they're too busy. They're not paying attention. So I'm like, watch that, pay attention to that. Yeah. Yeah. And I know we talked about hair because a lot of women follow me because of the hair and the gray hair movement. So I can just say, as we wrap up, this is there's no magic pill no. To, for your hair. So, was. right. If there's, if you're, if you got hair loss or it's thinning, you know, you just can't take this magic pill and think mm-hmm. we got to get to root cause, do the testing, find out if there's deficiencies and, right. you know, don't, don't guess you're going to probably waste a lot of money, get really frustrated and balance product to product. Or, you know, the, the thing that frustrates me is use our hair product and your hair will grow back. It, it, you know, that's an outside thing. And we got to like go inside to figure it out. Because everyone's different too. Why they're, why their hair is losing, losing hair, why they're having hair thinning. Everyone's different. So that's why that product might work for someone, but probably not necessarily. Right. We need to figure out, but why is my hair falling out? That's what I always look at too with symptoms. I don't go after symptoms. I have to go after root causes. Why are they there in the first place? Yeah. Let's not band-aid it. Let's find out why it's there in the first place. And then it's, you make permanent changes. Yeah. Thank you so much, Angela, for Welcome. this amazing podcast. Thank you women for tuning in. I hope that we have inspired you to dig deep, look into um, a functional medicine practitioner, build a health team together. If you're feeling like crap or going through this midlife transition and you want to feel better, there is hope. There is the testing to dive deep in, get the answers and build a lifestyle plan. Cause you know, we can be around. I think the oldest woman that I've researched is 116 years uh-huh. old. That would be some great, great Maybe. grandchildren right. that you might be able to hang out with if you start taking care of yourself now. So thanks, Angela. I really Thank do appreciate it. Appreciate it.
I want to say thank you for listening to today's episode. If this message landed for you, make sure to leave a review and tag me, Nicole Scott at Gorgeous Gray Movement, and make sure to share with your friends. You can head over to my free Facebook community, Gorgeous Gray Movement, or subscribe to my YouTube channel for more inspiring interviews. If you are still struggling and need additional support, you can take a look at my website, NicoleScott.ca, and learn more about my new menopause reset program that I'm so excited for. Until next time, ladies, be well and own your sparkle.